I'm Dr. Katrina Morrison. I'm a senior lecturer in experimental psychology at the University of Leeds, and I'm particularly interested in aspects of cognition relating to memory and language. What I want to talk about today is a tool called the cognitive interview. Now, the cognitive interview is a very popular tool in psychology. It's used very, very widely. And what I'd like to do is talk about it in particular in relation to forensic work. So that's work in the legal system and by the police. So is this an appropriate tool to be using in a legal setting? And what are its pros and cons? There are six points I'd like to cover in relation to the cognitive interview as it's used in forensic settings. The first is eyewitness memory. So we rely very heavily on eyewitnesses in terms of giving us the information we need to make convictions. The second is eyewitness confidence. And I'm going to give you some data that might surprise you about levels of confidence among eyewitnesses and the relationship of that to the accuracy of their statements. The third then brings us on to the nature of autobiographical memory. So eyewitness accounts are accounts that we derive from our autobiographical memory. That's the memory we have for our own lives. So my memory of my life, what I think about myself and any events that have happened in my life. Then we'll go on and look at police interviewing and look at the techniques that police uh, use in interviewing suspects. And we'll look at some data that indicate that police have to be extremely careful about the techniques they use in order not to mislead the eyewitness and in order to get accurate eyewitness information. So this then brings us on to the cognitive interview as it's used in police settings. And we'll look at the question of whether this tool really is the best tool to be using to get accurate eyewitness information.